John Smith versus Alpha and Delta. Sid's betrayal of Shadow Garden. Eminence in Shadow Season 2 cut content from Annie News. Let's see. Let's see what he has to say. Out of all the people that Sid has fought so far, Alpha may yeah. very well have been one of the most challenging for him. Yeah. The way she used Because he's the one that trained Alpha, right? So it clearly it makes sense that Alpha is the only one that should be able to challenge Shadow to a little bit. Mist form to bypass Sid's wires. Okay, the mist form. People keep talking about the mist form and I'm like, did I miss something in the anime? Some people on TikTok were saying that's some shit they got from fighting Elizabeth, but it's like Alpha wasn't there fighting Elizabeth. What are you talking about? Is the mist form just always been a thing? It was the perfect counter to a weapon that utilized space. It had led to Sid being on the defensive for quite an impressive portion what? of the fight. The wait, wait, wait. John Smith in the manga doesn't wear a mask? So it's even more noticeable. I mean, Alpha figured out immediately that it was like Shadow 2 or Sid, but damn. Wait, Alpha actually gave John Smith a hard time. Look at this. In the, in the manga, it looks like he's actually struggling. They unfortunately didn't show this in the anime, but there were actually several instances in which Sid couldn't even dodge. Alpha broke the mask? What the fuck? Why did they show this to us? Actually, there's something that I missed too, because um, John Smith also apparently had his mask like upside down and he didn't even know. Sure attacks. She was landing hits and making it Damn. seem like Sid was backed into a corner for- I mean, judging by this manga panel, it seems a little bit serious, right? It definitely looks like more challenging than the anime made it look. Once. So, if you want to see how exactly John Smith versus Alpha really went, along with Sid versus Delta and everything else- I hear Sid versus Delta was anime-only content, and I was like, cool. Else in between. Mask was just really designed. These TikTok comment motherfuckers, they just think that they know shit, bro. Between. Stick around as we'll go through all of it. Before we get started, though, I know most Rage if not all of Shadow you are Legends. With Idol, than Idol like Game. Oh, wait, what ago. the fuck? What the fuck? Any news is promoting like this boys love ensemble star. Yep, this is straight up like a boys love yaoi game, bro. Like, this is a gacha game, but you pull for like cute boys. Look at this. <laughs> Instead of wipers, you pull for this. But, anyways, use co use promo code discount and hashtag kaka for to get your idol boy. Go, 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 go. Does yeah, go, go, go. Volume 3 of the light novel. Picking things up from right after John's humiliation of 664 mm. squad, and Alpha was shocked to hear that all three of them together couldn't even touch him. The really cool thing here is the recognition to 664 squad here, because they said this is like an elite squad, right? This is like, I, I guess of all the squads right now, of all the different like lesser shades, the unnamed ones, this group is kind of popping off relatively well. Even 664 found herself humbled by the number of people whose strength far surpassed her own before she'd taken the world for granted. I love her, dude. I don't, I don't know who, what, what, what's her name? She's 665 though, right? But she's just always eating and she's just always so chill and she has the softest voice. I love her. Granted, but after losing her friends and family to circumstances we don't get to hear about, what in exchange fuck? she had gained both truth and power. Before she'd never even held a sword yet, here she was now powerful enough to defeat e We're just getting so much Nami. This is Nami, right? We're just getting so much 664 lore. And the strongest of Dark Knights. That's not to say she'd become cocky, though, since the existence of the Seven Shadows made her aware that there would always be people Stronger. she could never beat. Yeah. The first was Alpha, whose power was unrivaled. I know, I know why Annie News is leading in with this, because Nami made a specific comment. Or maybe it was Oriana, actually. I think it was Oriana, because on the train, Oriana's like talking to Alpha. It's like, no, this John Smith is like stronger than any of you shades. Now it was John Smith who seemed to be equal to her. When Rose had interrupted to make mm. that fact clear, yes. surprisingly, neither Gamma nor Alpha were upset. Unfazed, don't give a fuck. By it. Instead, they said how they weren't here to scold them, commending them on the fact that they had made it back to report on it. So, with that being the trigger leading to Delta's deployment. <laughs> the, the Del this is how Delta just goes to get shot at John Smith, my bad. She just jumps out the window, she just fucking destroys the window, okay. A few days would pass before Sid would encounter her. In the meantime, his afternoons were spent mostly the same. He would don the identity of this super elite secret agent and yeah. protect the flow of counterfeits the as they continued their way into Just ride the train, talk to Yukime. Occasionally, he would go touch base with Yukime, but the bulk of his time is- Straight up, John Smith? Like, I, I was really thinking, like, what does John Smith do? Where does he just, like, sleep? Where does he- Because he's just on the train. And we're just printing bills and we're just transferring currency and sometimes we talk to Yukimi on that train, but he just John Smith is literally an NPC on that train right now. John Smith was spent protecting carriages. It was while he was doing so on a night just like any other that a barely perceptible presence could be sensed approaching him. It was oh. a presence that obviously belonged to an assassin, but the discreet nature of it meant that it could only belong to one person. 
You might not remember this from the last episode, but I did Who? mention how Sid believed Delta to be the best at this type of stuff. The way she concealed her presence was second to no one. That being the case, since the assassin approaching him was extremely difficult to detect, that meant the only person it could be was Delta. Really? Oh, that's a lot of Delta hype. You know, Jonathan recognizing that, oh shit, this person's like presence. They're hiding it very well. Who could it be? Someone as good as hiding their presence must be Delta. But intuitively, you would think that Delta's terrible at hiding her presence because I don't know. She's just like, she's not dumb, but you know, she's loud and she's rambunctious and you know, she's a little naive. So you would think that she'd be bad at hiding her tracks, but you know, actually it's in, it's in her genetics of how she's like a dog girl. She should be able to do shit like that really well. It was the only person he knew who could hide themselves like this. Initially, Sid believed Delta to be one of his best matchups since the way he fights with wires. That's right, she's not dumb, she's special, you're right, you're right. Wires is known to do well against, well, hot-blooded meatheads. All he would have to do is tie her down with the hidden ones, then that would be that and she wouldn't be able to move anymore. This fight was, was ended Sid so quickly. This matchup a second time though that he quickly realized her traits as a theory and put him at a disadvantage. Yeah. You see, with instincts that were sharper than his and I made the comment right here. There's a TikTok I made. There's straight up a TikTok I made right here, right? A little, 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 little detour right now. But I, I made this TikTok. And it got 450k views. The Delta, Eminence, and Shadow ones are hard carrying me. But some people were so fucking, like, upset. Or, no, this one right here. 5494k. Of, it's just, this is John Smith versus Delta. And here I specifically say, oh... Wait, won't Delta figure out who this this is Shadow because of her smell? And people are like, pre-watched, pre-watched. This guy watched the fucking anime for this. How dare you fucking notice? And then I said, if you can't make the connection that Delta's using her Beast Girl senses to smell out Shadow, it's not just like self-reporting your own intelligence. I even said, then you have the intelligence of a dog. But then TikTok messaged me and said, your comment is very inappropriate. It, it goes against the community guidelines and I got deleted. GG. Zone. There was a good chance that she could dodge his wires on intuition alone. It didn't matter whether she could see them or not, because there were a whole bunch of other factors making them detectable to her. The invisible so wires with too. Now sure that that's what was going to happen. He truly believed that Delta was his worst matchup. So much so that oh. he actually felt he may have to go full tryhard for once. No. It was the moment. Straight up. But he finished her so easily. Delta had made her appearance, though, that one sniff was all that was needed for her to realize John Smith was Shadow. There wasn't even that little scuffle like how we saw in the anime. Sid was right in the middle. I heard this fight never even happened in the, the light novel, or maybe the manga's a bit different, but the light novel is the most truth, right? ...of his introduction, and before he could even finish... <laughs> Harbinger of Rebirth. Destroyer of all, my name. <laughs> he never did this kind of intro. Delta interrupted by asking to go hunting. She had exposed him fully Aww. with zero doubts whatsoever. She knew so immediately. Despite Sid having taken a bath and doused himself in perfume, Delta's nose was still able to sniff right through it. Even with perfume masking his natural scent, Delta still sniffed it out. Leaving Sid no choice but to take his mask off. All right, I'll just take my mask himself. off. A minor outtake that needs to be mentioned is the simple action that had led to Delta's hair being left here. Oh? It was the result of Delta trying to run off and report to Alpha. Wait! So oh yeah! Didn't want her doing we we used that to like, I, I don't know, they, they collected it, right? They're like, oh no, this is the only remaining thing we have from Delta. She might be dead, guys. That, so before she could get too far and break out into a sprint, he had grabbed her tail and told her to wait. We didn't see this, man. I wanted to see this in the anime. Why don't we get a Delta tail, like, uh, just yoinking on her tail seam, man? Resulting in several tufts of her hair falling out in the process. This would be the hair that Shadow Garden would find after, and it's oh, that no, bit she's of evidence dead. which would serve as the proof that she was Delta's defeated. dead! As for the reason why Shadow didn't want her reporting back to Alpha, well, it was mainly because of how bad of an actor she was. Sure, Delta could keep his secret no problem, but her inability to do so confidently would, without a doubt, lead to him getting exposed immediately. So go it kills Black Jugga Jugga. Just send her far away so that no one could track her. Black Jugga Jugga. At the very least, it would take them a while to. With that being the extent of Sid versus Delta, it was the reveal of Delta's fate that would make Alpha almost as bereaved <laughs> as Gamma was. They were taking that shit so seriously. No, Beta was even crying when she was reporting to Shadow, like, oh my god, Delta might be actually dead. She had known that something like this was inevitable, so oh, no. it was just unfortunate that today happened to be the day for it. 
I mean, it really was only a matter of time until they lost somebody. Shadow Garden's mission. I guess there hasn't been a death, huh? In our team. I don't expect there to ever be a death. I don't think this show is supposed to be that dramatic or sacrifice characters like that. There's no point, but it's funny that they were all crying over Delta's death. Things were always risky, and with Delta being the strongest out of all of them, it was only natural that she handled the most dangerous ones. That being the case, her not coming back almost certainly meant oh, the that window she cracking. was dead. It was just the general nature of the missions that she was sent on. Once this conversation had switched over to she got so Smith, pissed off. the realization that his plan extended to beyond that of a simple cash grab made her believe him to be this incredible genius. Oh. To her, the plan he had to come up with was flawless. It was as if he predicted everything before it could even happen. I mean, Around the sure. same time that Alpha was praising John Smith's intellect, so too would get and be doing the same. To him, this counter- This fucking misunderstanding, man. Like, what what intellect? We're just fucking around. We're, we're literally just fucking around and printing bills, but they're all like, oh my god, this plan is so fucking smart. Boy was also the work of a genius. Rather than attribute it to John Smith alone, though, he assumed the plan had to be carried out through an organization. Sure, Not wrong, you can made it definitely had the mind of a steel trap, but what they also needed was extensive funds, extensive manpower, and incredibly deep knowledge of credit creation. Since no person could possibly possess all of that, Getin assumed the plan was the work of Mitsugoshi. No. Nope. He believed nope. Mitsugoshi to have caught on to the plan to bankrupt them and as a result prepared the only possible solution for it. What? If they were able to gather enough funds before the bank runs happened, then with the amassed gold, they alone would be the ones to survive it. Okay, just so stop and just hide out. So what than to gather funds through counterfeits? By manufacturing them and so them they, the they they too are just printing bills, right? Getting figured Mitsugoshi would have raised enough capital to weather the bank runs. To him, he assumed that they had seen right through him. The reason he was able to come to this conclusion was because the messengers the cult had sent simply came to inform him of that. Bro, we just killed these two immediately. Look at this shit. They weren't there to threaten his position or criticize his work, but rather simply tell him that the counterfeits in the market weren't theirs. The fuck? These two are such douchebags in the anime, they have such smirks that Getan just cut off their heads immediately. It was a crucial bit of news that made him furious. This wasn't because he was losing at a game he thought he was winning, but was instead because death was certain if he did lose. By the in cult, fact, right? Getan knew he would be lucky if all the cult did was kill him. Which makes it really hype, because like, which other stronger cult members are there? Because I'm trying to think of actual opponents. We haven't really got Cult of Diablo's opponents in a long time, right? No, we really haven't. We kind of fucked around in Lala City. We know there, were, there was that plot line of Lord Perv Asset that's not really continuing right now. I'm sure it will as we go back into the Saving Oriana Kingdom. The rounds. You're right. Have we really fought a member of the rounds yet? Because we fought Zenon Griffey who was saying, I will be a future member of the rounds. But that was fucking easy. Obviously, he wasn't really supposed to be hard. I don't think any of the rounds will be hard. I, will the rounds be even as strong as Aurora that we fought? I just don't think so. Will the rounds? The Baldi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, these rounds members, they're not really strong enemies, now that I think about it. They're all just trash, right? Is there really any rounds table, like, members that we can fight and have some kind of like... Like, right now, Getan is scared that someone will punish him from the cult side, right? So that kind of gets me hyped up, because they've been kind of hyping a Getan for a while, too. But at the end of the day, they're all jobbers. Like, compared to Shadow, they're all jobbers. But is there a round, like, uh, Knights of the Rounds that is actually threatening enough to give us a good time? Probably not. Game he thought he was winning, but was instead- Nelson the Avarice. The Baldi had a fucking title like that? Nelson the- Nelson the Bald, dude! Look at that fucking hairline! Because death was certain if he did lose. In fact, Getin knew he would be lucky if all the cult did was kill him. Like, to have the MCA fall was one thing. I'm just waiting for an, a, a moment where this guy's hair flies off in the wind. I want there to be a moment where there's a strong breeze or something, and then his toupee falls off and he's actually bald. There has to be a bald joke in the making with this guy. But to have the cult lose all their assets in the process, all while giving Mitsugoshi a monopoly over the marketplace, well, that was- You are right, Spawny. There was a guy at the end of season one, Lord Pervas, that after he escaped, he was talking to like this TV. And in the TV, there was like his boss, and the boss's voice had Dio's voice actor in it. And at that point, I was like, oh, who is this guy? But I hope he's actually, you know, a strong member and not just some guy that's just like a political dude in suits like Lord Pervas had. Like, is Lord Pervas not going to be strong? No, he's just a suit guy that just is in a leadership position. I want some, like, strong fighters. This is something that the cult definitely wouldn't stand for. 
So, as panic overwhelmed his entire body, Gettin's only solution came in the form of finding John Smith. If he could, then the counterfeits were sure to be nearby. Then, if he could find the counterfeits, he could recover the liquidated funds and save the cult's assets. There was still time for him to salvage all of this. When Interesting how Delta and Alpha were able to immediately find the train that John Smith was on and just go attack, but fucking Getan, I guess his, I guess Getan is like struggling. I, I guess they don't have the same kind of like knowledge research and like outreach as us do. To the next scene with Alexia, this whole encounter with Alexia and Iris here. They really look like their personalities like flipped. The season one, their whole dynamic, it's pretty much been flipped because Iris is like on their path to destruction. She's looking so depressed. She's like down on her luck and she's just continuing to walk down the shitty path while Alexia is like reforming. She's reading books now and I don't know, she's getting training with Sid alone. So Iris is just going down and down and down. It was actually original to the anime. There was something similar to it in the web novel, but the topic of their discussion was vastly different. You see, Alexia had actually intended to track Iris down here. She had been hearing rumors bald! of the bank- BALD! Actually, this is not bald, this is what's called a cul-de-sac, guys. It's ...imminent bankruptcy and had rushed to the capital in order to tell Iris about it. She felt it was a matter that needed to be investigated immediately. For Iris, who was currently in the middle of training though, such news wasn't important at all. She actually couldn't even be bothered to care for it. Damn. The only thing that mattered to her right now Revenge. was getting stronger in order to capture Shadow. That was the only way she but felt like, she could gain the people's- There is no shot you can just get that kind of like power up. Wouldn't it be crazy if Iris somehow joined the Cult of Diabolos and joined, you know, the rounds to get power to fight Shadow? That would be an incredibly tragic end to her story. Damn. There's no way the author would do that, right? That is so sad. No, I feel like, if anything, Alexia will be the one to stop Iris if it ever gets down to that kind of point. And again, if I'm going somewhere, if I'm cooking, don't, don't say yes or no, okay? Okay, good, good. Just say that's a spoiler. Good. Just, just, just don't tell me direct yes or no. Whenever I'm throwing up theories like that, just tell me, mm, I don't know. <laughs> trust again. So, as she ignored Alexia to go back to her training, it was the way that Iris swung her sword that just seemed ugly. Something oh? about her practice just didn't appeal to Alexia anymore. Because Beta's Alexia used to really worship Iris' swordsmanship. It was very it was very elegant and good. But now, because Iris is like on this path of destruction, even her swordsmanship is like being reflected by that. That's kind of that's kind of poetic. Meeting with Shadow was pretty much the same, so that brings us to the much anticipated fight between John Smith and Alpha. I honestly wasn't expecting and then you just completely skipped over Beta and the uh, Shadow talking, but I guess there wasn't really much to say about that. I, the only fun part that I was like Beta again, misunderstanding that Delta might be dead and Shadow's like, what? Uh, sure, why not? Expecting this when the season had started, but a fight like this is something I'm completely Misform! Teach me misform! I don't think we'll ever get another instance of Sid versus Shadow Garden, so might as well enjoy this one to the fullest while we can. It was yet another one of those nights when Sid was protecting the counterfeits that a large group of men would stop his carriage for inspection. Not in the train. The search itself was very Mongo's illegal, different. but with the MCA panicking due to their approaching bankruptcy, pretty much every member of Garter's private army had been mobilized for this. They were going after every carriage that looked even remotely suspicious. It was as Garter's men would reach to unveil this carriage's curtains that a stern voice would warn them not to. The John man Smith actually mocked the voice as if to say it was an empty threat, but the moment that curtain was lifted, the man who had done so was immediately decapitated. Damn, the string went John out. John Smith would then appear behind all of them, recite. They didn't do this in the anime. My name is John Smith, destroyer of all, harbinger of rebirth. Is the rebirth here kind of like? Because you know how we're trying to burn down Shadow Garden and bring it rise back up to like become the new company, new CEO, right? Is that what he's implying here? Harbinger of rebirth of his own company? I don't know. Destroyer of all. I don't know. It's Shadow Garden, MCA, and Harbinger. So it, kind of stuff like that, maybe? I don't really know. But he never said this in the anime, bro. I wish he said this in the fucking anime. Hit the catchphrase he'd been diligently working on, then quickly decapitate the rest just as easily. Not a single person had even realized what it was that killed them. The carriage would then proceed like nothing had happened, but John, however, would stay behind and call out into the darkness. Reveal it was apparent yourself. that a much stronger threat was stopping. Alpha! 
Alpha would then engage the exact same way we saw in the anime, but rather than get blocked with a myriad of wires, she would just straight up miss as the target she was going for was actually John's after image. Oh. This revelation had to come as quite a shock because despite no- Again, these masks. I feel like somehow not having the mask, I was kind of disappointed by the logic because it's like, how the fucking Shadow just wear a hood and like no one knows who he is? Like, how the fuck could Alexi not realize who this is? But- now that I see more manga panels and now that I've seen more anime, I feel like this mask, it's better with no mask. I don't know. It doesn't, it, I'm not saying it ruins their design, but when I see Alpha like this with the mask versus without the mask, I think it just looks better without the mask. The titties here looks very funny here, though. <laughs> this movie, <laughs> Alpha Cleefy here looks so just wonky here. Knowing John Smith was strong enough to defeat even Delta, she never expected him to be this strong. From this single move, the level of power he'd displayed was beyond even her expectations. Oh, shit. The way shit. he moved at high speeds by compressing magical energy, <laughs> that was a skill that required incredibly precise magic control. That and magic circuits capable of withstanding such a burden. So, Alpha was definitely intrigued as to how someone like him had learned that, but the luxury of Damn, conversation look at Alpha. wasn't something John was permitting right now. What he presented instead was a barrage of wires heading straight towards her. The thing is, since Alpha was already aware of the way that John Smith fights, she had used that knowledge to discern where all of his hidden wires were. She had sensed all the smaller, thinner ones beforehand. Because remember, because exactly remember, he sets out these like visible ones, but there's actually invisible wires too. There's like an extra layer within the wire techniques. They were. She was able to navigate the maze that John Smith had created and close the distance between herself and him in an instant. She actually pressed him! up with an attack that went straight for his throat. Alpha had timed this in a way she knew dodging was impossible, yet with the slightest tilt of his oh. head, John Smith had done just... That's actually quite impressive. I mean, he did the neck crack. Like, this is a mundane man technique right now, right? Just cracking the neck and dodging, but... The mask, it got cut off, and then we get to see his actual face. That that's like a scene that should have been in the anime. It, it, it credits Alpha. It's like, she's not just random fodder. She actually got a hidden. Come on. He had evaded her undodgeable attack with the most minute movement. <laughs> John would then count. Unavoidable attack. Just dodge by just doing this. Kind of kind of disrespectful, but that, that is who, you know, how powerful he is. ...with another barrage of wires, but Alpha would do the same thing and find an opening between them. She would then follow it up with an attack even more precise than the last, but even that still wasn't enough somehow. Despite being perfect to the point of impact, her blade just wouldn't make contact as it would practically slide over John Smith's skin. It was a meticulous approach to combat that she knew only one person could pull off. Shadow! So, as she called out John Smith for who he really was, Sid would go on to explain nothing. He would simply state that- Because he probably has nothing to say to her. What, what does he even say to her right now? Like, look at this manga panel. Look at those eyes right now. Look at his face. It truly looks like he's just like baffled. I don't know. He's just like in shock. But knowing this fucking meme of an anime, you know what he's thinking. He's probably thinking, ah, shit. I don't really have a good excuse for this right now. I'll just remain silent. And then it'll be, remain dramatic. But right now, like, okay. So after Shadow's identity gets revealed, Alpha just has like a mental collapse, right? She's like, it's you. What are you doing? And then she's almost believing that Shadow's like leaving her, right? Shadow's doing his own thing and Alpha's like, but no, I'm just trying to follow you and just trying to be useful to you. Why are you doing this to me? But then Shadow's thinking to himself, great role play. You're acting really well right now, right? That's exactly what he's thinking. He's straight up thinking, wow, Alpha, you're actually going this far to entertain me. I can't believe you're in tears for me right now. Wow, this is amazing. That he was John Smith now and that whatever he was doing was the best option. It was the way Alpha professed her confusion after this that that whole speech about wanting to support him would be reminiscent of this. Obviously oh? not to the same extent, but that what essence of not understanding was very This is probably like an, an iconic scene from like an anime moment, right? I'm not getting reference from. Similar. The core takeaway from what Alpha was saying was that she didn't want Shadow to always be leaving her behind. She didn't want him to think that she couldn't support him. She has some crazy abandonment issues, huh? Huh. I guess that kind of comes from her childhood too? Kind of? Her and everyone else have always been trying to catch up to him, but no matter how fast they run, Sid's always acting like he doesn't need them. So to see him here now actively acting against them, well, that was a devastating realization Damn, she was actually crying. to make Alpha cry. Where we get to what I so think mean, is the John Smith. from the fight is Alpha's masterful use of Mistform. Misform. Finally. 
finally we're gonna get missed for him. He beat John Smith. Now, that's not to say that she beat Sid in a fight, but she did force him to have to use his sword. Something we know he was actively trying to avoid here. Wait! What? So, so you're telling me John Smith has a secret weapon, a sword. So maybe this is kind of spoilers, because I'm sure in the anime episodes in the future, maybe the future episodes, John Smith will bring the sword out against Getan or something. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll see something there, but maybe, if not against Getan, maybe he'll bring it out against someone else. But what the fuck? Why are all these cool moments getting cut out in the anime, dude? As for how Sid was forced into that, well, whenever he would try to dodge and counter the same way he did before, Alpha would have already struck and turned to mist by the time that he could. But what the fuck is mist for? So, like, if you watch One Piece, this is like a Logia uh, devil fruit, meaning like you just turn into an element's type, right? Alpha ate the mist mist fruit. So Alpha now just, just like can turn into this mist-like form and just like disperse everywhere. Where did she learn this? I think someone was saying like mist form is something like the blood queen ability. Blood queen ability that Alpha learned by studying Elizabeth's blood. That's insane. Just by researching the fucking blood, she learned it? Like what? How? Well, I, I, I don't know. She would vanish and reappear at a- Like if- Cause you know how Elizabeth did an attack on all the girls that was present at the, the rooftop during the, um, the fight, right? Those girls technically, because they have the progenitor vampire um, blood in them, they can also be used as a host to turn into uh, Aurora. Just like how Claire gets possessed by Aurora, like, Oriana could technically turn into Aurora too. Now, if you're telling me one of those girls knows how to use Misform, then I'd be like, ah, makes sense. But Alpha, that wasn't even there? Goddamn. Also, doesn't this imply that Oriana could technically use Misform too? Maybe? Right? Why not? Why not? Right? Makes sense. They should be able to use it, right? Beta should be able to use it. Nami should be able to. Anyone that was on the rooftop that got hit by Elizabeth's attack in those episodes, they should be able to use Misform too, right? The speed he was surprisingly struggling to keep up with. Small cuts and tears would then start to appear on Sid's face and suit, and that would make it seem like Alpha was actually winning for a bit. Damn. Whether or not that was true, it was definitely clear that she had the advantage right now. I never not felt like that in the anime. Not only so incredibly one-sided, but the combination of- Is this sword just straight up coming out of her- No, 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 no. The, okay, I thought this is some Raiden Shogun shit from Genshin where the sword comes out of her titties, but... Hmm. <laughs> I think this is the Shadow Garden, uh, the, this is the uh, Master of Garden of the mobile game art, right? God bless this art, man. Oh my goodness. Look at the sword spreading these mountains right here. ...of an offense that defied space, together with a defense that bent the laws of physics, was so oppressive. The only thing bending the laws of physics are these fucking titties in your back, dude, as you're posing in front of this moonlight. This is reminding me of fucking, uh, what's her name from Doki Doki Literature Club? Monica! Together with a defense that bent the laws of physics was so oppressive that it had actually surprised So, defense that, like, goes beyond the laws of physics. So if you, if, can Alpha be even be hit right now? Because in the anime, we couldn't hit her because she's literally mist. Like, she turns into this element. How do you hit mist? You don't. She can't take damage, but what we do then is crazy like martial arts, like impact, right? He does this crazy move and he goes like this and the impact, the wind from that, like blows the mist away. And that's how she got knocked away, right? Yeah. Sit. The way she vanished, then appeared and appeared, then vanished was what? overall just a really bad matchup for him. Specifically, his John Smith persona. The strings. His use of wires. He shouldn't be able to use it, yeah. Since the wires were used to manipulate space against his opponent, they were effectively useless against an opponent who could override the concept of space. Alt so I guess this is then where we bring John Smith. Also has martial arts and shows him his different, you know, his uh, different arsenal of weapons. Together. Not to mention the fact that this mist also doubled as some form of sensory organ. Hmm? What this meant was that, in addition to all the other stuff that I just mentioned. Alpha could also sense every wire's movements too. What? Whatever part of her mist would be touching them, she would know where they were and where they were heading. This mist form is fucking busted. It just gives you increased like in, like um perception of all your surroundings too. But if she stays in mist form for too long, there'll be permanent damage. The fuck? Why? All while not even being corporeal. So as three more slashes would make contact, Sid's suit would be ripped to shreds now. Oh, we're getting some Sid fan service. ...was because his movements and wires were just barely enough to prevent them from killing him. It was right as Alpha would... If Alpha loves Shadow so much, why is she trying to kill him right now? She's going all fucking out right now. 
he's fucking going all out and, and adding you to straight up saying if he wasn't being careful, there's a chance that he could die. If his strings weren't so precise and placed in the right moments, he could have died there. Alpha's trying to kill? Prove her worth by killing her master? Well, I guess, you know, at the end of the day, there's, there's no way she could actually kill Shadow. I think we all know that Alpha can't kill Shadow right now, or John Smith, right? So her going all out, it makes sense. She's trying to prove her worth. Okay, okay, but it's just kind of funny to think about that. Go for the finishing blow that she would call out one more time, begging to let her support him. Aww. She was hoping all this would have proved that she was strong enough now. But she like, what the fuck is Shadow thinking at this moment? What is John Smith straight up thinking? John Smith is probably like thinking to himself, shit. She caught me. How did she find out who I am? I have no answers. I'm just gonna stay quiet and ghost her. Hopefully she doesn't get upset by this. Obviously didn't want to hurt him, but if that was the only way to show that she wasn't a burden anymore, Alpha was fine doing what needed to be done here. Now, Sid obviously wasn't gonna let anyone beat him, so right as Alpha's sword was about to hit, he Yeet. would materialize his own and do one massive swing with it. What the fuck? The manga's so different! There was a sword technique that finished this fight, but in the manga, we got a cool martial arts that, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how cool this like sword animation is, but it would have been cool because this doesn't look like Shadow's actual slime sword. This looks like a totally different sword. I don't know, I'd like to see John Smith using a sword, but unfortunate. The released magic combined with the immense force of the wind was enough to end the fight just like that. So it's the same shit. At the end of the day, it's just straight up, just brute force the magnitude of the wind blowing her away instead of, you know, doing the, the fist like this, you know, the sword was just used like that. Wonder why they cut this off. I guess it looks cooler with the martial arts technique. Maybe. Any and all mist was immediately dispersed into the stratosphere. In fact, had Alpha stayed in her mist form any longer, the end result likely would have been fatal for her. Mm, why? So, as Sid would compliment. Oh. Wait. Sid straight up said that? <laughs> oh, you never said that. <laughs> Alpha in the anime, for all we know, is still having a mental breakdown because Sid straight up just yeeted her. She's off the train and she's thinking, why are you leaving me? Why are you doing this to me? But in the manga or the light novel, there's actually confirmation that Sid says, hey, you're useful. It's okay. You've grown, you've grown strong. But in the anime, she's still fucking like, oh my god, why are you doing this to me? And her on how strong she'd become, he would knock her out using the flat side of his sword, <laughs> then leave her behind. You've gone strong. Yeet! <laughs> Get knocked out. As if to say nothing had changed. Bringing an end to an amazing fight between two that of the fight, world's okay. strongest characters. That was pretty cool to me, right? Had changed. Bringing an end to an amazing fight. This scene... This scene was pretty cool to me. Like, this is a really cool moment. I'm not sure what would have been cooler. Using a sword to do this? I, I don't know. Him, like, going like this. Like, it, it makes it look really fancy, like some kind of martial arts. So it, it looked, I don't know, I'll, I'll take this, but just wanted to see the sword too. Amazing fight between two of the world's strongest characters. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this. That's it. Content. Head pass for Delta. I hope Sid's disregard for Alpha doesn't make you hate him, but I will admit it was pretty harsh of him. I mean, I wonder what he's thinking truly, because we don't really get from his perspective of what he's thinking. Some people are saying, like, what if Sid just thinks that Alpha is playing along so well, all these cryings, all these different emotional lines that she's saying is pretty much like role play for this performance that they're putting on. It's like a great act. I don't really know. I'd like to think that Sid just straight up had nothing to say. It's like, oh, shit, you caught my John Smith personality. This isn't really part of the plan. I have the answers for you, so I'm just going to ignore you, which is also kind of on brand for Sid and would be funny. Other than that... This whole clash with Shadow. One more time, one more time, one more time. But doesn't make you hate him, but I will admit it was pretty harsh of him. Wait for it. Other than that, Delta Giat. This whole clash with Shadow Garden was probably some of my favorite. That is so disrespectful. Delta did the whole movement thing and just ambushed the train and fucking attack, gets stopped by the train. Sid, the John Smith just like carefully slowly put the book in his, you know, pocket before fighting her. It's so smooth. From Eminence Look at this. Still getting up so slowly. Down in the comments. Did you like this arc, or did you prefer some of the other ones instead? Mm, I think I like this arc a lot so far. I mean, I enjoy the blood lady, the Lady Elizabeth one too, but hey. Give a like, subscribe to his channel if you don't, and news always gives us these great videos to get more light novel context. Some of the important things that I really wanted to know was missed form, and again, he didn't really explain it. <laughs> For answer, it did. <laughs> Actually, any news failed to mention that Misform is an ability that was originally possessed by the Blood Queen, right? Beta also acquired it after being infected with Elizabeth's progenitor blood. Also means that everyone else on the rooftop got attacked by Elizabeth, like Oriana, for example. Nami, 
So like 664, 665, 666, they should all technically should be able to use misform, right? Alpha learned it due to beta bringing back a sample of Elizabeth's blood and study it as, as Alpha quickly learned the ability. So until Alpha straight up teaches, you know, Orion and everyone else, they won't be able to use it. But technically, they should be able to use it. But regardless, we do these reactions live on stream 7 a.m. PSD on Twitch and YouTube. So hope to see you there.